there's a thread of simplicity in the approach that all of the combatives and the uh, CQB and the firearm stuff has over this weekend, all right? It's simple. It's based on very, very fundamental concepts like, like managing space, um, dealing with, with a hierarchy of positions and dominant positions, uh, and, then, and then fundamental things in terms of movement uh, with a weapon, movement with, against another opponent, hip position, head position. You're seeing the same things over and over and over again from all of the various instructors here, right? All of the things that this community, uh, that we value in this community, are the result of pressure testing, right? The, the fundamental things that you're seeing in all of your sessions are that way. Like essentially everybody's teaching the same concepts just in a, very, a slightly different way, right? Because there's pressure there, right? And shit that doesn't work under pressure gets thrown out and we don't value it. There's no way except for you to try what I'm gonna propose to you today to pressure test this, right? There's no way to pressure test fitness because we're already really doing that to ourselves when we train in jiu-jitsu or we train wrestling. So like there are two kind of disparate situations and you try to meld those together in your head, but there's no real pressure testing, right? Um, in terms of the ideas and the concepts. So that's why we have like a room full with 16 or so people in here and everyone's gonna have a slightly different idea of what fitness, pro the proper way to approach fitness, the proper way to do it is gonna be. And uh, it may work for you or you may think it works for you, all right? But what's optimal? You know, we gotta consider what's optimal and that comes down to some fundamental principles and then we, we're gonna try to get some agreement on some fundamental principles and then build off of those and give you a way of thinking about how to approach fitness, all right? Does that make sense so far, folks? All right, cool. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna give you guys my best argument for strength as your primary, uh, as the primary driver of your fitness and you know, the primary supporter physically of all of the things that you wanna do in the combatives world, right? Uh, and not only that, it's called performance and longevity. So longevity in the context of performance, right? I don't care how long you live. Like, that's not my job. I, I care how long you're able to do the things you want to do, right? So that's uh, in terms of you want to train, you want to go to classes, you want to be able to uh, prevent injuries, you want to bounce back from injuries quickly. So that when I say longevity, that's what I'm talking about. Like how long are you going to be able to train? Because the thing that's going to keep us from being able to do what we want to do is not the lack of access to coaching, knowledge, or will, it's gonna be, we start getting fucked up, right? You're, you start hurting your back, you start hurting your knees, you start hurting your shoulders. The way to stay ahead of that is through fitness, and the way to, to do that from a fitness perspective is through strength, at least is my argument, all right? So let's talk really quickly about um, what, what, you know, we think about combatives, it's stuff like this, right? And you know, when you see something like this, it's hard to argue that strength isn't a, a fundamental component of, of, this, of this, these things, right? Um, and we already talked about this a little bit, but um, you, know, you, can, you can talk cardio all you want, you can talk flexibility all you want, those are all, everything that we can consider is an attribute, and you come to the table with certain attributes already built in because of your genetics or because of the, the things that you have done in your childhood or as, a, as an adult through training, right? So you bring the attributes with you. So when you consider all of the various things that you could potentially work on, it can get kind of unwieldy. Like, what do I do? Do I work on this? Do I work on this? Do I work on my conditioning? Do I work on this other thing? <clears throat> but at a fundamental level, like I said before, all of these things require high levels of force production. And the more force you can produce, the more brute strength you can bring to these situations, the easier things are for you, all right? Does anybody disagree with that? All right, now I'm not talking about, because you know, everybody brings up, what about the bodybuilder that comes to jiu-jitsu class the first day? Um, he's gassed. Well, they are, they are, if they're a bodybuilder, they're fucking strong. Um, they're strong. Like if the dude has arms this big, he's fucking strong. Like he may not, he not, may not bench what a power lifter benches, but he's fucking strong, all right? Now, so what people will do is they'll bring up the bodybuilder and say, look, look at him, he's dying. He's dying, like it's, a, he doesn't know what he, like he's a, he's a big jack bodybuilder. Um, you know, he's worthless. It's his first day, dude. Right, yeah. Everybody's first day is like that. But you don't assign that kind of, uh, that, you don't assign that value to the guy who weighs 140 pounds on his first day because you just expect him to suck. 
yeah, so the big muscular dude has, already comes with this like expectation that he's supposed to perform better because he's bigger and stronger. What's gonna happen six months from now? It's gonna suck really bad to roll with that guy, right? Yeah, so we all, un I think we all understand this, right? We all understand that strength is a big part of it. So why, why would you step out of your, um, of your thing? Right? If you're a shooter, you're a shooter. If you're a jujitsu guy, if you're a wrestler, uh, why would you leave those things and walk into a place like this or your home gym or your commercial gym and work on your quote unquote fitness? What, what are the reasons you do that, guys? It helps you with your thing. Okay, right? Helps you with your thing. What else? <laughs> give, me, give me some specifics, though. Give me some specifics. Makes you feel better, all right, good. What else? Makes you harder to injure. Okay, yep, makes you harder to injure. Injury prevention, anything else? You guys are missing the one that is really, honestly at the core. There we go, there we go, there we go, yeah. So it's actually three things. It's, exactly, it's three things, right? The first one is performance, right? So you wanna get better at your, at your thing. You wanna get better at jiu-jitsu, you wanna get better at, uh, at whatever your deal is, you wanna get better at it. So you start to think to yourself, okay, look, I've been training jiu-jitsu for a year now, and I feel like I'm kinda of stalling out in terms of my progress. I know I need to keep rolling, that that's gonna come, but what else can I do, right? So you start thinking about what other things can I do. Luckily, like right now, today, it seems like more people are gravitating towards strength training, understanding that strength is important. Um, I think it has to do with the level of competition, when you competition, you've got guys who are training properly to be able to perform better, so that always filters down. Uh, you see big, strong dudes uh, winning things, so it's like, okay, it's not, it's not the, the sickly uh, master who wins, it's the guy who looks fucking athletic and strong and fast, right? He's the one that wins. So performance, absolutely. You wanna get better at your thing. Second one is longevity, right? You wanna be, injury proof or as injury proof as you can make yourself and then the other one is aesthetics right you want to look better so let's not lie to ourselves right we a lot of things that we we do is because we think it's going to make us look and feel cool right so uh a lot of times uh a, a lot of uh, whether you realize it or not like lifting going to the gym uh can aesthetic aesthetics has a, absolutely plays a role there right so <clears throat> i'm going to cover how strength training and barbell training will help us with all of those things yes sir I, I was just Absolutely right, I was gonna say that, and thank you for reminding me, because I almost forgot. The way you look in our world matters, right? In terms of deselection, right? Craig always brings up the term, the, the, the concept of deselection. If you look a certain way, you're gonna get passed over, right? It's like, I'm not gonna fuck with that guy, I'm gonna fuck with that guy right there, right? So absolutely, man, the, the way you look, and you don't have to, you don't have to walk around with, uh, with, you know, with, with a bodybuilder physique and 8% body fat, when you train, and when I say train, I'm talking about training in terms of what I'm doing, right? Barbell training, getting stronger. When you train and you've gotten stronger, you've gained a level of proficiency, you look a certain way and you carry yourself a certain way. And there's some deep seated recognition that's buried deep in our DNA where you understand that that individual is not somebody to fuck with right, when you, when you look at them. So uh, that is a very innate, primal deal that's built into us. Um, you'll just be a, a target, a, a, a less viable target to somebody who's looking, who's, who's engaged in predatory behavior, right? We all, we all understand that, we all agree with that, right? So uh, absolutely, so aesthetics, yeah, I, I was bringing up aesthetics as kind of like a vanity thing because it's, a, yeah, we all have that, right? We all wanna look, hey, we all flex in the mirror and stuff and like have your wife come up and squeeze your arms and stuff. Uh, but, but in the combatives context, absolutely, man. You look a certain way, you'll get fucked with less, right? Uh, so thank you. <clears throat> All right. So yeah, we're in agreement then. Any, anything else? I mean, I, I, to me, that covers it. Performance, longevity, aesthetics. I don't know that there's any other reason we would go to the gym other than that you're just like a meathead and you like going to the gym, right? But in terms of how this fits into what we're doing in terms of being more capable, um, I think those, those, are, those are pretty solid, yeah. How do we, how, what do we do? How do we approach this? And we talked about this already at the beginning. You have all of these different things that you can do. And with the power of the internet now, you have a proliferation of all ideas. So everything has an equal, uh, equal voice. So it's confusing 
right? And it's, you have people telling you do this, this is the best way, and you have people presenting um, examples of successful individuals having used this method or that method, and there's, there's just a lot to consider, right? So um, you have just this massive pool of information and some good and, and most complete bullshit, right? So what I wanna do is give you an approach to thinking about things that's process-based, all right? And we already do this with all of our combative stuff, but carry that into your way of thinking for strength and conditioning as well. So what does a process allow you to do? It minimizes variables, right? It's, it gives you a starting point. And once you start running the process, provided that the process is founded on good foundational principles, like gravity is a thing in barbell training, right? That's a good foundational principle. Uh, uh, adaptations have to, adaptations match the stress. That's a foundational principle. Like it doesn't matter if I have a room full of idiot personal trainers and strength and conditioning coaches, and I say, the adaptation that I'm looking for has to match the stress, or I'm sorry, the stress that I'm applying has, will match the adaptation. None of them will disagree with me on that. Does that make sense, guys? Nobody will disagree with me that gravity pulls things straight down. So we need to start there, build our process off of fundamental principles first principles, and then work our way into something that makes sense, all right? So we're gonna use a process to kind of filter through all this stuff and, and give you a way to think about things that you can start running and then make decisions for yourself uh, based on what's good information, what's bad information, all right? Uh, <clears throat> so what's the standard model? When I say standard model, what do we, what do we see happening right now in terms of professional strength and conditioning, just what people prefer to do as well, all right? The standard model is that you make your training look like your sport. Make your training look like your sport, right? And I see this all the time. You've got jujitsu guys laying on, the laying on the floor with a band across their hips and they're doing hip, bump, hip bumps with a band, all right? Now, anybody ever used bands before for anything? How much, how much, how much resistance does a band add? <laughs> it's not gonna add the same as a 250 pound man on top of you who doesn't want you to move, right? So, uh, so a lot of this stuff just becomes kind of like, um, you're just, you're just re-practicing your sport and you're not really doing anything from a physiological performance standpoint. Like you're not stressing yourself enough to demand an adaptation, all right? Does everybody understand what I mean by adaptation? Forcing your body to make a change, it's very difficult. Because our bodies don't like to change. We like to, it likes to stay at, at a baseline, at a homeostasis, right? So you have to impose a stress that's gonna tell your body, oh fuck, this isn't, this, if we keep doing this, it's not gonna work. So let's make an adaptation so we can, we can accommodate for this stress. And then you keep doing that and you do it productively and then you get stronger, you get faster and all these things, right? So uh, when you make your training look like your sport, you're not doing your sport well and you're not training for shit. And by training, I mean, uh, I mean improving your physiology. Okay, uh, because it's not stressful enough. And then also the things that you're doing aren't anything like the specific positions and situations you're gonna be involved in when you're doing your sport. Here's an example of a young woman. I don't know who the hell she is, but here she is with a 55 or 65 pound barbell and in, Brazi in uh, Brazilian, in, uh, in Portuguese it says, excellent exercise to improve mobility, flexibility, and force in your guard, strengthen your guard. All right, now. Here's the question I wanna ask you. Well, actually, just, let's just look at this for a second. So that looks like jujitsu stuff, right? And we're loading it with 65 pounds. 65 pounds. Even at her body weight, if she has a woman the same size as her, is 65 pounds difficult for her to deal with at the end of her feet? No, she, she deals with 100 pounds plus probably 200 pounds plus on a daily basis when she does jujitsu, right? Do you guys agree with that? So she's not doing anything, right? She's just putting on a, a show, and I don't know what the fuck that is. Yeah, I mean, look. First of all, that never happens in, in any real life in jujitsu encounter. But it's more load. It's a little bit more load. It's, it, my point is that it's not as much load as you see in just actually doing jujitsu, yeah. right? Make sense, guys? Here's, here's one of my favorites, and I think this guy's a SEAL. Anytime a SEAL does something, everybody wants to emulate it. But here he is with a cert pistol and a, and a band, <clears throat> and he's walking around. I hope this isn't anybody in the room. <laughs> um, 
So you guys that are you guys that are firearms people, I mean we're all firearms people, but you know if you if you teach firearms um, and you know what it's like to get a clean presentation, to to ingrain a clean presentation out of somebody, and now you put a band on yourself, and not only that, look at his his his, his, eye, his eyes are looking at the floor, all right, and he's dr he's driving the gun up with the band, for what? For what? I mean he's made. <laughs> he might be. That's great, man. He may be. Wait, what? I'm sorry, he may be. A, that's great, man. He may be trying to fatigue his shoulders, right? But again, what are we actually accomplishing there from a physiological standpoint? What adaptation will that produce? I don't. I don't know. Explain it to me, because it's not making you stronger. That fucking band is not not enough to make that guy stronger. It's not enough. All right. Uh, if he wants his shoulders to be stronger, he needs to, he needs to load his shoulders with a heavy weight. It's definitely sure as fuck not helping his, his presentation, right? Now, he, if he only does, does this every once in a while, is whatever, it's probably going to be okay, right? But if he does it over and over again, you're going to fuck with the mechanics of your presentation. All right, and that's, that's obvious to anybody. But you guys understand the point, right? I don't want to belabor this too much, all right? I got, I got a question. Yeah, go ahead. Just maybe my lack of experience. Sure, sure, absolutely. making it heavier, right? So then when he actually does it without the fan. Yeah, but that's a transient effect. And what I mean by that is that gun will move. So as soon as he takes that band off, if we put it on a timer, that gun's gonna move faster mm -hmm. for about 30 minutes. Right. And then it goes back to the, to, to, because it's a, it's a neurological situation, right? It's like a and, overall, right? Exactly. It's it, 30% higher and then you recruit more muscle fiber, you take that 30% off and then you right. Exactly. Exactly right. So, so yeah, that's true. And there's studies that like people will pull up studies and say that, you know, you, you take a heavier uh, baseball and you throw a heavier baseball and then you do that a bunch of times and then you put, you, you, you time it, uh, or I'm sorry, you, you measure the speed of the ball. And as soon as you get back to the normal ball, it goes, but that doesn't hold, it doesn't hold. Like it's only, it, it's transient. It's only right now because you're not practicing. You have, you have way more reps with a normal ball. You have way more reps with not a band than you do with the band. So it doesn't stick, in other words, right? And by the way, in this example, who the fuck needs to be faster from here to here? You don't need to be faster from there to there. Like, you need to be faster out of the whole street. You need to be faster out of clear, right? So this, it's useless, dude. It's, it's completely useless. Anyway. Uh, okay, second part of the standard model. And this is, this is what gets a lot of people in trouble because you say to yourself, well, this individual does this, works for them, and they're the best in the world, right? Understand that people who are extremely proficient at the things that they do, shooting, fighting, um, sports, were born to do those things, right? In other words, they have a, uh, they have a different uh, neuromuscular endowment than you do, okay? Unless, does anybody have a 36-inch vertical jump in the room that you know of? You would know if you did. Anybody get paid to play, play professional sports in this room? All right, so it's none of us, right? Uh, <clears throat> those individuals are, are born with a degree of athleticism that allows them to be stronger, number one. That's, that's primarily what they are. They're stronger on day one. Um, and also, they're more explosive, all right? They're related, but they're not the same thing, okay? So what'll happen in the strength and conditioning world, and this is, this is ubiquitous, it's everywhere. We did, a, we did a whole podcast where I showed videos like this, and we just, for NFL stuff primarily, because NFL athletes, in my opinion, are like probably the best prepared and the strongest and fastest individuals on the planet. Um, so in other words, most athletics, but they're doing shit like this, guys. Okay, so ask yourself the question. If the thing that I'm about to embark on or the thing that looks interesting, is it developing athleticism or is it displaying athleticism? This is Mackenzie Dern. You guys might know who she is. Um, Mackenzie Dern, and she is under this, this contraption with this strength and conditioning coach jamming this machine down on her single leg. And you can see she's going down to, um, not like a range of motion that's controlled by her muscles, by like an anatomical range of motion. So she's letting go and this dude is wham, slamming this thing down on top of her. Um, she's very flexible, obviously. She's very strong. Um, and she, she's handling it fine for the most part, I, I guess. But um, 
what's being developed there? Pain tolerance, right? Uh, it's not a high force production event because she did it like eight times. Um, it's extreme ranges of motion and that has no value to any of us, right? But so I would say that's a display of athleticism. I don't think anything, anything of value is being developed there in this individual because she's already very flexible, she's already very strong, and um, this, I've, this is not that hard to do for her. It sucks, but it's not that hard from a physiological standpoint, all right? And remember what I said, baseline, disrupt baseline, make your baseline higher. This is not making her baseline higher. It's doing shit that she can already do, right? Notice that she's also on this wiggly ball, right? She's not even on a stable surface. So there's no way this is, a this is a high force production event for her. Is that clear, guys? So what is it, what it for, let's say, let's say one of you guys decided to do the, uh, my man with the, with the new hips over there decides to do this. What, what, what are you doing? Wear and tear. Just extra wear and tear, right? Because you put yourself through enough shit in your grappling training um, and your, your, your striking training and that stuff, and then you add this on top of it, it's just accumulating more stress that you don't, that you don't need to have. Clear there, folks? Okay, here's a, a, this is one of my favorite videos, Anderson Silva, right? If you don't think Anderson Silva is like one of the best fighters in the world, you'll have a lot of people disagree with you, right? The, one of the best fighters to ever live. Um, they got this motherfucker in a green jumpsuit wearing a, a N95 mask or something. Doing what, guys? Doing spider things. <laughs> Doing spider things, apparently. <laughs> Developing athleticism or displaying athleticism, right? This is something he can already do, right? So uh, I'm not mad at Anderson for this. I'm mad at this motherfucker, this strength and conditioning coach who is putting him through this. And what's really happening here is a strength and conditioning coach is patting his own back by having this guy do a very impressive thing, but not actually developing any athleticism, right? And this is kind of what it comes down to. It's, this, it's the ego, the strength coach, not actually forcing an adaptation out of these people, but just, just putting, them, putting them up and showing what they can do and making them a little bit tired maybe, but I, don't, I would argue that there's nothing being developed here that he doesn't already have, all right? Is that clear enough, folks? <clears throat> so these guys, <laughs> these guys are not good at what they're supposed to be doing, which is strength and conditioning, and they sure as fuck are not good at the sport that they're pretending to do, right? You see what I'm saying? So this individual's unqualified to make your strength or your conditioning better, and he's sure as shit un unqualified to make your jiu-jitsu or your MMA or your football or anything else better, right? So he's just kind of there to, 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 to take money and, and make you do cool shit that, he, that you can already do anyway. All right, are we clear here, folks? Any questions? This is really important because uh, these are kind of extreme examples, but this is this is uh, this kind of stuff here, um, and the dude with the band. That is the current, cutting edge, highest level strength and conditioning shit that happens. Right? It's not strength and conditioning. It's not barbells and pushing sleds and getting really tired it's functional training. Like it's standing on wobbly shit and balancing and doing circus tricks, right? That's the standard model. For these people, they can do it. It doesn't matter what you do for the best athletes in the world. They will improve because they were, they, they're just wired to do that. Okay, for us, it's a massive waste of time. You won't get, you won't get anything out of it other than getting better at whatever thing you're, you're, they've got you doing. All right, any questions on that, folks? So that's the standard model. That's kind of what goes on now. Um, I want to tell you about our approach. It's called the two-factor model. So rather than the standard model, it's a two-factor model of performance. Okay. <clears throat> so you have to separate your performance training into two separate tracks. All right. So you want to consider your training, which is the accumulation of physiological adaptations, and your practice, which is what? The accumulation of skill. skill the accumulation of skill. All right and the two shall never meet, okay? When you practice, your practice is specific to the sport, the positions, the movements that that sport requires. And that is best done by you and your coach in that sport, all right? You in the gym cannot replicate the, the metabolic demands, the cardiovascular demands, 
or the force production demands that the actual sport requires of you. It's very difficult to do, all right? So here, let me give you a simple example. A guy starts training jujitsu, gets gassed, gets winded, it fucking sucks. So he says, I gotta get my cardio up. So he starts hitting the road, starts running, right? Does running three miles feel the same as rolling three hard rounds with a very heavy and strong person? There's not even close. It's not even close, right? Sure, it, that's exactly right. And I'll talk about that a little bit more. Exactly right. That's exactly right. And cardio, cardio might not even be the problem. It's just efficiency. So we might be able to tr take care of it just by that. But if we are going to work on conditioning, let's just say, let's give them the benefit of the doubt and say, all right, well, let's work on your conditioning. You have to recreate the conditions that you experience during that role in the gym. How the fuck are you going to do that? How are you, you going to make yourself feel like you do after the third minute rolling with a heavyweight on your second week of jiu-jitsu in the gym? You're not going to do it, guys. So, so in other words, you're, in order to meet that level of conditioning, you have to recreate that level of conditioning. The only way to do it is to do more jiu-jitsu, right? And not only are you getting better condition, but you're also getting better, you're getting more efficient, and you're using less energy, right? Does that, see how that works? So if we're talking about physiological adaptations, we're talking about structural and metabolic adaptations for training. So structural being your bones, connective tissue, muscles, right? Metabolic adaptations, how you use energy, how you use sugar, how you use fat, how you use oxygen, right? So cardio in, in, uh, in, in layman's terms, cardio, all right? <clears throat> That's your training. Your practice is your skill development. In terms of conditioning, these two things, at least at the beginning, overlap, right? For all the reasons that we just talked about, right? You might just suck. So getting less sucky might make your conditioning better because you're just more efficient, right? But also, the practice of the sport that you're doing, the metabolic demands of that sport are exactly the ones you need, right? So if it's still making you winded to do jujitsu, that's your conditioning, right? So what are we left with? We're left with structural changes. All right, now, everybody's gonna get stronger doing anything that they haven't done before, but that only lasts six weeks, 12 weeks, not a long time, right? So you're gonna have to step outside of your sport and do something that makes you stronger. And uh, the most efficient way to do that is with barbell lifts, right? So squats, presses, benches, deadlifts, uh, Olympic lifts if you wanna do those. But the primary lifts are the four, squat, bench, press, and deadlift, right? Those are the ones that give you the most bang for your buck. And with all of the stuff that we do, we want to spend as little time in here as possible because we got other shit to worry about, right? We got to get, become better shooters. We got to become uh, better grapplers. We got to take medical classes. We got to do all these things to be, to be well prepared <clears throat> um, within the context of these high skill areas that we have to spend a lot of time working on. So spending four hours in the gym is not feasible, right? Not only because of the wear and tear on your joints, but also because you, you, got, you want to do other things, right? So we want to be as efficient as possible. So the barbell takes care of the structural demands for you very efficiently. You know, a heavyweight sets a five, gets the job done, and then you can focus on your skill development, which at the beginning also takes care of your metabolic needs. Clear so far, guys? All right. <clears throat> um, so why don't people do this? Why don't people do barbell training? It's hard as fuck, right? It's hard as fuck. Yeah, Matt just reminded me, he's Matt Larson's in the room and he said yesterday, there are, there are no advantages to being a wee little man in the world. <laughs> so that is absolutely true. Um, and, and the other Matt Larsonism, I'm gonna steal it right now. Who could beat Bruce Lee? A bigger, stronger, a stronger Bruce, Lee. Bruce Lee, right? For sure, you can argue anybody else, right? Because I said Mike Tyson, you know. But a better, a better answer is a stronger Bruce Lee. Like that's guaranteed. That's guaranteed, right? Absolutely fucking guaranteed. Um, so, <clears throat> barbell training is hard. It, it takes some effort to learn to do correctly, all right? The deadlift we did today is really simple, but you know, you're gonna have to work on it a little bit. It's kind of a new skill you're gonna have to learn, but once, you're off, once you learn the basics of it, you're off and running. The shit is hard, guys. I mean, it's as hard as your, once you, you know, if you, I keep saying jujitsu because I do a lot of jujitsu. I, I own a school and I, and I teach jujitsu, but <clears throat> I, I really enjoy <laughs> fucking jujitsu. I do not enjoy going to the gym and lifting weights, 
Like it fucking, like I've been doing it for a long time. It's not fun. It's, it's a necessity, right? It's, my, it's medicine now. I have to do it in order to hang with the younger guys, in order to keep my knees from hurting, in order to keep my shoulders and my back from hurting. Gotta do it. Uh, it's not fun. It sucks. It's really, really hard. So it's not enjoyable, right? So that, that's, that's the bitch of it. So, uh, but things that are hard tend to be better for you anyway. So if you can wrap your head around that, if you're good with it, uh, it's, it's a worthwhile endeavor. All right. Um, sorry, I'm going, if you have a question or you want to talk about something, raise your hand. Uh, because just like I thought, I'm going to run out of time here. Uh, the other thing is that it doesn't look or feel like your sport at all, right? When I tell a, uh, when I tell a new white belt who is all wrapped up around conditioning and, and feeling like they're drowning and I say, listen, dude, number one, you suck at jiu-jitsu, get better at jiu-jitsu, so just show up as much as you can. Number two, get stronger, like right now, get stronger. Uh, but that doesn't look like anything that I'm doing here. <clears throat> like I'm, I'm not gonna be a power lifter. We're not power lifting, right? These happen to be the lifts that are used in power lifting for, because they're the best tests of strength, right? But they're also the best, best way to dose yourself with a stress that will produce a strength adaptation. So it just happens to be that they're the same lifts, but we're not interested in specializing in strength, all right? That's what this is here, right? So when you start out anything, you're bad at it, right? This is your kind of theoretical potential for how good you can be at something physically or just in terms of learning something, right? When you start out, you're really far away from it. And as you progress, you make very rapid progress, right? Every, you guys have all experienced this. You make very, very rapid progress, whether you realize it or not. And then it flattens out. It's typically called plateauing, right? So your progress starts to, what's that? <laughs> exactly, your progress starts plateauing, or in other words, it becomes harder and harder to make the next jump in performance, right? To make the next increase in performance. It takes more time, takes more effort, takes more money, takes more food, whatever the case may be. More inputs to get the next appreciable increase in performance. This is called the law of diminishing returns, right? That's exactly what it is. But physiologically, this is what, what happens as well. Um, and also with skill, it happens as well, right? <clears throat> So as we're moving along this curve, shit gets harder and harder and harder. And by the time you're up here, man, you're not getting much better at jujitsu or much stronger on a weekly basis, not even on a monthly basis. It might be on a yearly basis. You're, you're improving yourself significantly, right? So shit starts to slow down and get harder to do. Okay, so when I, when I, just in general, as you're moving along this curve, when you're down here, anything works to make you better. Right? So when I say just do more jujitsu, that's going to move you along that curve much, much faster. Just get stronger. It's going to move you along this curve much faster. Strength bringing it with it, increased force production, shit gets easier, so you use less energy or more energy, right? Either one is good. Um, <clears throat> also, uh, more agility, right? Because changing directions is agility. If you can apply more force, you're more agile. Um, potentially more flexibility. If you're real stiff uh, and you start squatting full range of motion, you'll get more flexible because the best way to get more flexible is under load, not, not like static, like just sitting there static stretching doesn't do anything. Putting yourself under a load and moving through a full range of motion will make you more flexible. So all of your physical attributes move along this curve <clears throat> through strength training, all right? As it starts to flatten out, now the law of diminishing returns fucking jacks you in the face, right? And it says, in order to keep making progress, you're gonna have to serve me as a master, right? So that's where specialization comes in. So when, I, when we talk about a power lifter, that is a specialized strength athlete. It's not us, right? We're gonna move along this curve for the rest of our lives without a strength specialization, without a specialization in anything other than our skills that we wanna, that we wanna develop, right? Because a specialization means trade-offs, right? If I wanna be the strongest version of myself that I can be to win competitions, I'm not gonna be doing much else. All of my energy and focus goes into that specialization. So I'm, that's not what I'm proposing. I'm proposing that you use strength as a way to improve your performance along this curve as a support without without proposing that you need to become a power lifter to do that, all right? Does that make sense to everyone so far? All right, <clears throat> so a good training system takes you through these curves, through that performance curve efficiently, as efficiently as possible, all right? So barbell training moves you through the training performance curve as efficiently as possible, and a good 
jujitsu program, combatives program moves you through the skill curve as quickly as possible. All right, so that's where the process base comes in. That's where the, the importance of the process. What is the process that you're gonna use? Does it make sense from a fundamental principles perspective to you? Um, are the arguments good? And then does it make sense in terms of how to implement it? All right. <clears throat> so uh, does that make sense though that the training follows that curve? Also the skill follows that curve. Everything follows the law of diminishing returns, right? Hopefully up to this point, I've made a decent argument for why picking apart each of your athletic attributes and trying to develop each one individually is sort of a waste of time because a lot of them are being taken care of by practicing your sport because you're down here, right, in your sport, all right? So just doing the sport is gonna, is gonna bring all the athletic attributes that that sport requires along with it, okay? In terms of training, strength training as a structural adaptation builds everything up along with it. So it improves your physical baseline. Remember at the beginning I talked about combat as being like on a fundamental, an a fundamental level, an integration of all your baseline characteristics. Physically, strength is the baseline and you're gonna bring your, your strength level up, your force production level up, and that improves all of your athletic attributes except your specialized endurance attributes, which none of us have, right? Anybody do ultra marathons or marathons? Good, okay. Yeah, so n none of us in here, right? If, if that's your thing, then strength kind of takes a really, really way back seat, all right? <clears throat> but most human activity that we care about, feeding, fighting, fucking, happens on a high force production side, right? Matt, agree with that? Yeah, yeah high force production. So, <clears throat> Exactly right. Exactly. Right. Exactly right. Yep. Yeah. So, so with all that said, guys, um, let's talk about like a simplified process because everything I've kind of set up to this point is kind of theoretically. I like, get to the fucking point, man. So let me let me give you like a framework for how to proceed, and this is super simple. Like, if I'm explaining this to somebody who I haven't had any kind of talk to, this is what I'll say. So, um, if you're weak and unskilled, all right. So you're not good at your sport. All right, just to put like belts on it. Let's say you're a white belt or a blue belt. All right, Uns blue belt, unskilled. If you're a blue belt, I'm sorry. All right, you're, you're skilled. All right, you're skilled, man. Uh, but <laughs> weak, and un weak, weak and unskilled. So when I say weak, here's what I mean. I mean that you haven't put yourself through a, uh, through a, a program of training that has required a strength adaptation out of you. So you haven't put yourself through a barbell-based strength training program. Kettlebells, guys, are not the same thing. They don't make you stronger. Kettlebells very quickly become conditioning work. All right, so something that requires you to do more force production, ideally using a barbell. Yeah? What do you feel about that for like farmer's carry and stuff like that? Specifically How long can you, do, can you do it? And um, can you progressively load it? If you can do it for more than, for more than one to five reps, it's not fundamentally strength training. Does that make sense? So yeah, that's a really, it's not, it's not requiring a force production adaptation. So there's other things, but there's other things going on to do a farmer's carry than just raw force production. You see what I'm saying? So, so maybe it fits in your program, but in terms of everything that I'm talking about, like just getting stronger because efficiency, right? Um, not, yeah, it kind of, it kind of starts going into the, into the conditioning side of things. Yep. Um, okay, so weak, meaning you haven't done a, you haven't done this process. You haven't gone through the process of forcing yourself to get stronger. Um, doesn't matter if you squat 80 pounds or you squat 300 pounds, all right? That's an important point I want, I want you guys to understand. Some of you on day one will be significantly stronger than the average person. But if you haven't put yourself through a progressively loaded barbell-based strength training program, regardless of how strong you are right now, um, that's where you start. Okay, so if you squat 85 pounds, you squat 300 pounds, put 300 pounds on the bar, next workout do 305, next workout do 310, and see where that takes you, right? You will improve your performance by doing that process. So weak and strong, are weak and unskilled? Get strong first, all right? Simple, get strong first, right? Don't think about anything else. Do your sport, get stronger, good to go, okay? Next category, 
you are strong and unskilled. <laughs> strong and unskilled. So you're a strong dude, you're a farm boy, you're a welder, um, you know, you, you, just grew, you just came out of the womb fucking jacked. Um, you're, but, you, but, but you're still down here in terms of your skill, right? So you just started, you're, you haven't achieved a high level of proficiency. And again, because we're all kind of familiar with, with BJJ, let's, let's, talk, let's talk about um, uh, <clears throat> blue belts and under. Right. So, in other words, going to jujitsu class still 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 is stressful for you in terms of like how physically stressful and, and from a cardiovascular standpoint how stressful it is to, to train and roll. Okay. Uh, maybe even purple belt. So strong and unskilled, suck less. Be, be get better at your sport. Okay. Because you're already strong, so you're going to continue getting stronger. Right. If you're already strong, meaning you've gone through a progressively loaded barbell-based strength program. Just keep doing what you're doing there, right? <clears throat> but just get better at your sport and your performance improvements are gonna come from there primarily. Make sense, guys? Okay. <laughs> These are the two most common scenarios. You have somebody who's weak and sucks. You have somebody who's strong and sucks, all right? And in both instances, just, just get better, right? Get better at the sport. Uh, in other words, there's not much to do other than get stronger and get better. All right, so weak and skilled. So you're a purple belt an experienced purple belt, definitely brown belts, definitely black belts, right? So you, in other words, you go to class and you can modulate your stress, right? You can, you can pick who you roll with, even if you're rolling with a brand new huge white belt, you can still kind of control yourself and you don't, you're not torn up after every training session. And, and, you know, take BJJ and overlay that with whatever it is that you do. But your, your skill isn't that physically demanding for you anymore, all right? Now, I'm not saying that, like, as a brown belt, jiu-jitsu is easy for me now, but I don't get beat up the way I used to, I used to get beat up as a, as a blue belt, right, in terms of physically stressful. <clears throat> um, so if you're weak and skilled, obviously, right, get strong as soon as possible. And this happens all the time. I get, I get uh, skinny black belts, skinny brown belts, and they ask me what they should do. They're good on the mat. They're not worried about their conditioning. Their conditioning's fine. If they have a, if they have a competition coming up, they'll ramp up their, their roles a little bit. Um, <clears throat> and uh, and, and they, can, they can manage all that stuff. They're not, in other words, they're not worried about it. They're experienced enough on the mat that it's not a concern. Just get stronger. And they start getting stronger. No shit, guys. Eight, in, a, in a good barbell-based strength training program, within six weeks, you know, usually they'll feel it much sooner. They'll come and tell me, like, I feel so much better on the mats. Um, but within six weeks, it's noticeable to everybody in the room. They're like, dude, what have you been doing? Just by squatting and deadlifting. It's like they get a grip and they're like, oh, fuck, this is a different person now. So, so imagine like a, a year from now, two years from now, what happens. So these folks, the weak and skilled, brown belts, black belts, who get stronger, those folks see the most obvious improvement in performance right away because they have a baseline of performance that's up here. In other words, just going to jujitsu every week isn't making them significantly better, but now you lay barbell training on top of that and then they, bam, it takes their game to a next level, right? <clears throat> you, you got something to add there? No, okay, all right. So I really, really enjoy working with, uh, with experienced guys who are like skinny and underweight, um, who aren't afraid to like, a lot of the, the little guys get fucked up in the head about weight classes. Um, but honestly, if you carry more muscle, it's easier to cut weight. Um, but uh, those guys, I love working with them because they're telling me right away, like, fuck, man, I wish I would have done this five years ago because I feel so much better on the mat. They can handle bigger people. It's, it's awesome. Um, and then the last category, strong and skilled. Let's be very clear about what strong and skilled means. It means that you have gone through a progressively, a progressively loaded program that has demanded physiological adaptations out of you, all right? And you're at a high level of skill. So who are we talking about? Who are we talking about? Me? No, fuck no, not me. High level competitors. Yeah. Right? If I think about it, just uh, people, people here this weekend, um, it, might be yeah. it might be Brian. Oh, Brian. It might be yeah. Brian. It might be Brian, that, and that's, you know, maybe, maybe Sam, I don't know Sam that well, but, uh, that, but that, and maybe Brian, because Brian, even Brian will admit that he should get stronger. So we're talking about people at the highest levels, you know, the, the Galvaos and the, uh, and the Gordon Ryans when they're competition ready, like that's what we're talking about. So in other words, it's not fucking you guys. It's not you, all right? <laughs> it's not you, so, <laughs> so don't worry about it, right? 
Because if you're, if you're here, if you're here in terms of your skill and you're here in terms of your uh, s- structural and metabolic conditioning, whatever program you do is specifically designed for you. All right, so everything that I showed you guys earlier with the fucking guy and the band and the cert gun and Mackenzie Dern getting smashed by the leg press machine thing, uh, those things may work for those individuals, but it only works for them. In other words, it won't work for the next high level athlete because they're so far ahead on these curves that anything they do needs to be specific to them. All right, remember what I said much earlier on, if we're down here, anything works. So what we need to do is pick the one that's gonna give us the most bang for the buck and move us along the performance curve as quickly as possible, right? So does that make sense to everybody? So don't kid yourself. So when you look at what, don't look at like what your favorite athlete does, because this is, this is like, this all makes sense hopefully to you right now. But dude, you'll look at Instagram and you'll say, look at what this guy does, he's the best in the world. I'm gonna do this program. You're not that individual. Right? You're not that person. So you haven't gone through a process. That program does not make sense for you. All right? It may eventually, something like it may eventually, but until you've run the process in a way that makes sense, you don't really know. Right? <clears throat> well, remember the point I made earlier that all that is a result of the pressure testing that's built into uh, jiu-jitsu. It's built into our combative stuff. So, so you, it, what emerges is, is things that are useful and things that are not useful get discarded. That doesn't exist in the strength and conditioning world. Uh, so we're left with just logic and, and reasoning to argue through this thing because that pressure doesn't exist because the people that are doing, that are the highest performer, there's a high performer bias, right? So people that are performing the best are gonna be put up as the example for how to approach training, but that doesn't, that doesn't work for, for anybody except them, right? So, so you gotta, that, that, that's my point is to start from this simple process-based approach and kind of see where you, where you end up. Um, I got one more thing real quick. We got one minute left, so I'll try to bust through this. Um, Let me give you one last kind of useful thing. So um, thinking about longevity, thinking about your training career, right? So remember the focus of this discussion is how do you leave your sport or your your hobby to supplement it with training that's gonna improve your performance and improve your longevity, all right? So in terms of longevity, to organize your thinking because people screw this up all the time. You're You're like, squirrel, squirrel, squirrel. You get really excited about things, right? So strength number one. All right, the thing that will keep you training longer and keep you doing the things you wanna do, not only on the mat, but in your day-to-day life, are primarily driven by strength, all right? And that also includes things like your metabolic health, your bone density, like things that matter when you get old, all right? And you gotta start doing that now because when you're 75, it's, too, it's, it's kinda too late. You're just kinda holding on, all right? So strength is number one. That's gonna keep you on the mat longer. It's gonna keep you training longer. It's gonna keep you healthier longer. Nutrition is number two, all right? Now, we could have a whole other two-hour discussion on nutrition. Keep it fucking simple. Like, people worry about supplements and BCAAs and and this macro versus that macro, if you're not heavily into nutrition and you haven't done this process with your nutrition program, um, you have no business worrying about anything other than getting enough protein and enough calories to gain weight or enough enough calories to lose weight, depending on your goals, right? So get a gram of protein per pound of body weight. Everybody in this room trains hard, that's a minimum, all right? A gram, per pro, a, a gram of protein per pound of body weight. And then if you're fat, eat a little bit less calories than uh, is your baseline. If you're skinny, eat a little bit more calories than your baseline. So you do that by watching the scale or you can track your food, right? Just track for a week, see what your baseline is and then start going up or down. When you've done that for a while, then start worrying about carbs, start worrying about fat, start worrying about all this other, all the other stuff. Keep it real simple for yourself, all right? Most people never have to get beyond protein and calories, okay? Uh, as people who train heavy, when you're lifting, carbs become important. Like if you're not lifting heavy, carbs, you can take them or leave them generally. But if you start barbell training, you're gonna have to eat some carbs. So you guys that are all fucked in the head about carbs, you gotta get over that. <laughs> um, <clears throat> movement, movement, all right? So we all move when we're doing our activities, right? But I'm talking about movement like throughout the day, like as we get older, we have jobs that aren't physical, you're sitting at a cubicle, you gotta, you gotta move, you gotta make sure you have a, some kind of a baseline for, for range of motion and stuff throughout the day, all right? 
I didn't have time for this, but I fucked my back up really, really bad about two years ago. It was on a cane and stuff. Um, and that was primarily from driving, like driving 50,000 miles in 2021. Uh, and I had a pretty catastrophic injury. I rehabbed it with barbell training with my coach. Um, but that was, that was probably the deal, just sitting too long at a computer or in a car. So movement is another one, right? Get better at moving, you'll get better at your sport and you'll keep your joints healthier for longer, all right? And then two, uh, actually the last one, and this, uh, two more, skill, all right? I made skill small because these are the things you enjoy doing, right? So you don't have to prioritize them. You, you already like doing that, right? So I don't have to like put skill at the top because you're gonna do the things you wanna do anyway, right? So, so yeah, you're, that's, the whole thing is to support this aspect of it. Clear? All right. And then I made this one really tiny, supplements. Don't fucking ask me about this supplement or that supplement until you have all of this dialed in first, okay? Uh, protein, whey protein is not a supplement, it's food, all right? So it's not a supplement, it's just normal food. So that's not a supplement use it. Creatine is probably the only supplement that's of, of much value unless you have everything else dialed in. Right? Creatine has lots of good stuff about it. Force production and also it's neuroprotective too as you get older. <clears throat> All right. All right. Sorry, we're three minutes over. Any questions, guys? Questions? Comments? Yes, sir. Yeah, I just want to put in, I'm sorry, I'm just thinking of the thing, but I want to put in a pitch for the starting strength method. Right? What do you think are the all this being said, what are the most important things for a new lifter? Like, what I, my opinion is that the starting strength has broken the code on that because the, the, start, the most important things for a new lifter are where it doesn't tax them right. uh, and start concentrating on form to get them used to it so that they will inevitably be strong. So that's the incremental method, whole, the whole approach there, like it's math. Start small weights, use math, get stronger. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, again, thank you guys very much. If you have any questions, um, let me know. I'm happy to answer any of your questions for you and I appreciate your time. Thanks. All right. Thanks guys. Thank you. Thank you, man.